been in the design industry for about 17 years now, and I'm currently in the um, Pacific Northwest, and it's rainy here every day, so I am very much um, used to being inside. <laughs> But that being said, I have a lot of experience working, again, with Fortune 500 companies like Microsoft, Nordstrom, Boeing, uh, JCPenney, and most recently, uh, Alaska Airlines. Uh, a lot of companies that are here in the Pacific Northwest that have a lot of opportunities. That's a big advantage. Um, I have the BFA in visual communication design. So I have a solid background. I focus a lot on color theory, hierarchy, and typography. I like to integrate all that information in uh, working as an individual. <laughs> I like working by myself. I like working with teams as well. That would be more in a contract. And then freelance is, of course, by yourself. So you have to be very okay with being by yourself. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Pamela. Um, so could you share a little bit of how you got started as a freelancer and what were some of the challenges that you faced early on? Yeah, of course. So I actually started my career in New York City. And so it's a very competitive city, right? And unfortunately, I was there when a recession hit. That meant no one was hiring. So what are you going to do? You have a BFA, you're very smart. Like, what do you do with all that information? Now, the biggest part of being a freelancer meant uh, networking. First and foremost, you put yourself out there. <laughs> it's scary, but that's what you do. You meet everyone and anyone that is design-oriented, business-oriented, make books. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, that's what I did. Uh, for the about three years, I worked as a freelancer. I did make a book. I also did work with um, E-Trade. And I was there as a um, technically a consultant, design consultant, different titles come with the same role. So keep that in mind as well. Um, one of the big things that I had coming out as new, brand new designer, right? I have to prove myself. The biggest part of that is being able to prove myself with my work and bringing your work forward is the biggest thing. Definitely. Thank you for answering that. Um, so I know being a freelancer, it's uh, really important to find clients and um, get sources of work. So what do you do when being a freelancer and when you're not getting any clients or any contract work? So kind of what I was saying, uh, networking is a big thing. Uh, so it, like Iterate UX, you have the opportunity to meet people from all over the world. And those people may need your help as well. So it's thinking not just in your small little community, but it's also branching out. So that's the big thing. The other thing is that you could take the opportunity to create your own designs, uh, make your own website update your portfolio website or uh, dive into different certifications. Like take that time to really learn more about what is going on in the design world. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps. Definitely. So Amy has some questions. 
So in your experience, has online or in-person networking been more valuable for you in gaining work as a freelancer? So it kind of is a twofold. So for me personally, I have been very active online, make a lot of posts, you know, that can give a lot of people looking at you at your LinkedIn or say um, medium, maybe you write things. Uh, that's one way to meet people. I also do enjoy uh, going to meetup events. Um, they are very, um, again, it's scary. It's scary to meet people. <laughs> it's not easy to be like, hi, my name's Pamela. I'm a designer. I need work. Like, you can't exactly say that. I mean, you could, but I don't recommend it. Um, sometimes, even though you don't think about it these days, having a card is very much helpful to hand to someone, right? Um, unless you're going to be right next to them, like say you're a freelancer, you see someone in a coffee shop. I mean, that's a very rare occasion, but it does happen. So don't be afraid to say, hi, I see you with a laptop. I have a laptop, like something that's in common. Don't be afraid to say hi. I like the idea of having a card, even as a designer, because I myself really rarely think about that. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and what are some of the strategies that you find uh, really effective when you are advocating for your skill set when you're talking with clients or potential clients? Absolutely something you need to be very confident about. Uh, you are your best advertising. If you are going to go into meeting someone and you're not very confident in what you do and how you do it, that's not going to win that freelance work. That's not going to win that contract. You want, you need to come in and say, I know exactly X, Y, and Z about UX, about product, about business. You are a business. That's a big thing that you need to keep in mind. You're a business. You're going to be the only one who looks out for you. Nobody else is going to do it for you. So you need to pick up your pants and, you know, be confident and say, hi, I know X, Y, and Z because I've been doing it for X, Y, and Z time or that I know why this works because I've seen how your website doesn't work. You've got to be really um, confident, but not arrogant. So it's a very fine line. Confident, but not arrogant. <laughs> I'm taking notes. <laughs> um, so when you're working with clients, how do you handle situations when they push us back on your proposed budget or timeline? or even the scope of the project? So that typically will come in a contract, right? So you have a very, um, or I personally like to make it very specific. So if you only have X, Y, and Z budget, then I only have X, Y, and Z timeline, right? If you're, you are your own business. Think about that. You get paid based on your work and your time so if someone wants to push back and say like oh well I need these things I need this website to be redone by tomorrow well I can't do that because I don't know anything about your website so either I ask you a lot of questions and you that's my time or you're going to have to pay me more <laughs> it's either or it's budget or time that it's just how it works and you got to stand your ground again be confident but not arrogant 
Amy has another question. How do you go about branding yourself slash your business as a freelancer? And where you may designing for a wide range of different industries and experiences? My goodness, that was a very long question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I think branding yourself is a journey. Um, you are not. I personally. Have have done this over the years, right? So I think of myself as being, say, individual contributor, right? I was that for a very long time. But you can always change. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with change. And um, I really want to advocate for that. Like, your business is your business. But think about like Apple, right? Apple is Apple, but they have also changed how they approach design. And if you want to have a very specific design as far as like what you do, who you are, and then awesome. But again, don't be afraid to like change, update. <laughs> That's good advice. And Ahmad has the question, do you get contracts that are within your area of expertise, for example, e-commerce, or do you also take any type of project? And how do you talk to clients when you haven't done work related to your experience? Related to that specific company? Mm -hmm. Yeah, your experience, okay. for example. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, so... Me personally, again, I like to work in many different industries. I like to have a lot of v like variety in my background. Um, that makes your portfolio a little more diverse. That's how I think. However, if you are, are it also depends. Are you approaching them or are they approaching you? Because if they're a company that's totally out of whatever you've done before, that's okay as long as you think or at least need to think how the company thinks. So be on the same wavelength. It has absolutely nothing to do with the work per se, but you can create a very short case study that shows I understand what your company does. I know how I can be the best di designer for you. Like there's a lot of opportunity there. Don't, don't think there is, there's lots of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Maybe have another question. Um, would you be willing to share a story of how you landed one of your Fortune 500 contracts? And what was the process like for you? Uh, for the Fortune 500 contracts, I personally, again, don't like dealing with taxes. So I go through third parties like um, Aquent or... Um, uh, K force or someone like that. Um, uh, because again, I don't like dealing with taxes as a freelancer. Taxes are you, <laughs> it's on you, it's all on you. And if you're not going to put that money back to pay for taxes later, then you're going to be in big trouble. Um, I did that and I was in big trouble for a couple of years. <laughs> It took a long time to get back into normal. So, um, so yeah, I would be very cautious and, you know, think about how you want to go about it. Thank you for sharing that. Um, the next question is, how do you ensure that you are fairly compensated for your time and effort, especially with new clients? Well, as a freelancer, that contract 
needs to be notarized. And so when it's notarized, it's legal. So there's a lot of legal aspects to that. Um, I haven't, I've been very fortunate in that I haven't been in a situation where I haven't been paid. So um, I, I would very, very much recommend having it contract very specific very outlined there is no wiggle room um just make sure again you're looking out for you because no one else is going to mm -hmm. and this one's from Senu. how do you bargain with service fee for the contracts i'm so sorry say again uh, how do you bargain with service fee for the contract? How do I? I'm so sorry. My connection is the worst. No worries. Um, I can, I can repeat it again. So how do you? Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. No worries at all. Um, so how do you bargain with the service fee for the contracts? Well, that goes back into being confident and not arrogant, right? So um, it's also bargaining would be that negotiation with that contract. Um, it's time and budget. If they don't want to budge on their budget, then you have to be willing to take away your time. I know it's money and we all like money, but you also have to have that respect for yourself um, and keep that in mind. It's going to be a thing. Um, and as a freelancer, again, you don't have to keep yourself to just one client. Um, be open to working with multiple clients at one time. And that can actually be very beneficial on a monetary aspect. Thank you for sharing that. And next one's from Ahmad. Do you work on hourly basis, wholesome or both? And how much would that be on average for a senior level in the Northwest, I'm assuming? That's very specific. Um, <laughs> so is that, so, okay. So the question is very multi, multi, verse i would say um so okay i can't give you a specific range when it comes to freelance work because again that's based on the client and what they're asking for or as far as what a senior designer with contracts should be paid for that again depends on time and budget um, if you're going to negotiate with a third party, totally be open to it. But that means that you may not get any PTO. So um, it's what you're trying to get. Do you want more PTO? Do you want that medical? Do you want the dental? How long do you want to be with them? Anything's negotiable. Um, keep that in mind. Uh, to give you a real number, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know your skill set. I don't know who your client is. It can range hourly from like, I don't know, 55 to 125. Like it just depends on the company, the hours and the length of the contract. This one's from Adriana. Um, Hi, Pamela. Do you recommend asking for 50% in advance of the full price of the project? Mm. I think that depends, again, on time and budget. So if you want 50% of the work, it depends on the work. What is the work? Is it really easy for you or is it really con like confusing? Con confusing for your client? <laughs> like 
keep that in mind too. Uh, you need to know that your client is also on the same page and I also want to keep in mind the level of experience that you have. If you're a junior designer, I definitely wouldn't ask for 50%. If you're going to be a senior, you've been around, people know you, then you're definitely, you know, you're very open to being 50 to 75% for sure. This one's from Amy. How have you approached balancing multiple clients or contracts simultaneously in respect to your time and schedule? That's a good question. Uh, when you have contracts, you have very much uh, strict hours, or at least you should. <laughs> and um, as far as like, they also, a lot of companies here, when you have contracts, at least in the PMW, um, you have NDAs and you need to be very aware of that. Um, and that may or may not mean you can't work for a competitor. So that's also something to consider. If you want to do freelance and contract at the same time, awesome. Good for you. That's a lot of time. And I would... I personally would only take small freelance work if I was always already doing a uh, full-time contract work just because of time <laughs> and I want to have a life. So I would keep that in mind too. Work life is very important. Uh, mental health and like being very good for you. You are you. There is no other you. I agree. Work kind of balance is really important. Speaking of that, are there any methods or strategies that you currently use that you think are really effective for a really healthy and balanced work life schedule? I personally, I used to be really bad about working like 120 hours. Um, but I make sure that I have a cutoff time. I set a timer on my web, on my phone, actually. Um, I think it's Pomodoro or whatnot theory, where it's only set for like one hour, two hours, three hours, and then it makes me stop. Because as I know, and many designers know, we get in the zone and we totally forget to eat. Uh, and we totally forget that it's like eight o'clock. Oh my God, where'd the day go? Like we need, uh, I personally need a timer and I use that. I also make sure that um, I actually have six dogs. So they also help make me stop and take a moment and, um, you know, have a life. I need to take them to the park on the weekends. Like I need to hang out with friends and have a life. Thank you for sharing that. It's really great advice. Um, do you have any advice or suggestions for um, freelancers who are hesitant to go out and advocate for themselves or just hesitant to go out to like say network an event or to meet people? Yeah, I know. It's scary. <laughs> it's very scary, especially if you're an introvert and it's not natural. Like I, yeah, I totally get it. I'm that person. <laughs> so um, it's, it's a risk and you got to take a baby step. So, okay. If you are taking that baby step into freelance work, then try putting out your name in something like Fiverr or Upwork where it's like you're there, but you're not really there. So you have the opportunity to look at how someone else does it. You know, you can see, okay, they charge X, Y, and Z for this amount of time, or they are char charging, say, 
$500 for two hours. Okay. Well, am I worth that? I don't know. Do I want to put myself out that? That's your decision. Um, but you got to take a risk at some point. Because if you don't take that risk, you don't take that step, it's never going to happen. And you're going to keep saying, what if, what if, what if, and that's not going to get you anywhere. So you can only advocate for you. <laughs> you are you. I'm not you. You are you. You're the only person that advocate for you. That's a great suggestion. Um, how do you build long-term relationships with clients while also maintaining your professional boundaries? I have been very guilty of that, <laughs> of not being very good at that. Um, so that, that gets a little tricky because you can get real comfortable with your client and maybe it gets a little too comfortable. That's where you have to draw that line um, of respect. So if you feel like you're sharing way too much personal information, you really need to stop. And it is a business and you, you don't want to open that door for your client to take you for granted. Because once that door is open, then that means you get paid less or they have all these requests for all these iterations and they want it tomorrow. Like you need to make sure that your boundaries are set not only for the client, but also for you. Thank you for sharing that. And we have a question from Nancy. Um, so Nancy says, I've been freelancing as a graphic designer for many years, and I'm tra now transitioning into UI UX design. From your perspective, is freelancing a good approach for someone just starting their career in UI UX? Um, I mean, it's a good step. It's a good step. If you're like kind of hesitant, you're not very sure about yourself, do it. Go freelance try it out, see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. That's the benefit of a freelancer. You have the opportunity to kind of like try things everywhere because no one's going to stop you. Um, that's the benefit of it. I like it. And going off of that, do you have any um, platforms recommended? Like where uh, where to get started as someone who is just getting started in oh, yeah. the freelancing market? For sure. Yeah. Like I mentioned, there's Fiverr, there's Upwork. Um, there's also this, um, there's freelancer.com. There's also this some um, other website. It's called Bark. And um, it actually will give you a lot of information where the client already had answered these questions. Like, I want a designer who does UX. I want a designer who does websites. I want a designer who does this, that, and the other. So you don't necessarily have to ask these questions. They've already answer them so um so that would be a great one i think that's um, a nice one to start with sounds good also though keep in mind nothing is free <laughs> <laughs> nothing is free there's always a fee um make sure that you read that um before you um put yourself out there that's true um, our next question is, when you are presented with the opportunity to work at a Fortune 500 company or a startup company, how do you, how can you decline while also keeping the doors open? Well, I wouldn't decline. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you do decide to decline I would do it very uh, professionally obviously and I would um 
make sure that whoever is my contact with that company is still going to be in my, say, LinkedIn or just personal web or um, email list, ping them sometimes and just, you know, keep in mind, like, hi, how are you? Like, how are things going? Because you never know. Maybe you want to go back to that Fortune 500 company and say, hi, do you still have that job? So, yeah, just be nice, professional, um, and keep, keep in touch. Thank you for sharing here with that. Um, how do you handle client feedback or client revisions? I think that if I'm a freelancer, it is in the contract that they get only so many iterations. And if they decide to push back on that, again, it is me to stand on my two feet and say, hi, I understand. Here's the contract. Here's the budget. Here's the time. This is my time, my money. <laughs> So um, let's keep that in mind as well. Um, whenever they're a client who wants to um, cross the line and really push for push you, um, push you around. Don't let them be confident. Stand on your stand your ground. For sure. Um, speaking of contract, are there any specific elements in the contract that you think freelancers should be really looking out, or should be really looking out for? in the contracts? Uh, yes, okay, so in a contract, again, it's also time, budget, expectations. So iterations is going to be um, very specific on deliverables. It's going to be very specific on the um, monetary aspect. Is it going to be um, per iteration? Is it going to be per budget, like, or per project? Uh, that needs to be very specific in your contract. Um, and if you have a lawyer, uh, make sure they are also named in there um, so that there's no, no real uh, conflict when it comes to the actual contract. Thank you so much, Pamela.